Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. The other day I was on Pinterest, you know how we all do, we look through YouTube videos, we look through all our Facebook groups, we look through Pinterest. Every now and again, you see something that sparks your interest. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I love all my folds and my flips and little mini album type things. As I said, flicking through Pinterest and I saw this beautiful little mini album, just a general mini album um, that just folded like I normally do. And I thought, oh, love that. Want that in my next journal. I came home, started playing with it, and I thought, once again, I don't know about you guys, my journals always end up very gator mouth. This is the journal that I'm working on at the moment. Hang on a moment. Move that, move that. Right, so this is my current journal that I'm working on. I go back to it and I come back to it and do other things in the meantime. It'll have three signatures. So one, two, and three. I've done my first signature. It's all done and dusted. Got my bits and pieces in there, ready to go. That'll be sewn in once I've done my other signatures. I do mine first so that I can pull them out, put them back in and all the rest. That's my last signature ready to go. So I like little small journals. But as you can see, if I hold them up straight, set that one there, that one there. This one I've only just started working in. It's three signatures, not that many pages, but it's already starting at the moment, it is just the right size. Once I start putting on my flips and my folds and all the rest, it'll start getting like this and getting like this and getting like this, which I don't mind too much, but every now and again, I'd like just a thinner one. So as I said before, I was playing with this one, went to make it up, find the right one I'm working on, and um, looked at it again and thought it's going to add so much bulk to this journal again. I need to do it in thinner because normally I do it in um, cardstock or scrapbook paper with a little bit of digitals. Not that much, most of it, because I'm trying to use up all my stash of scrapbook paper and plain cardstock, the craft cardstock. All this has been done with coffee stained paper and um, packaging. So I thought, right, what if I do it all in my book pages? Because if you're like me, we've all got, you know, all our book pages. I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of book pages and books that I've, you know, gutted because I've used the covers for them or whatever else. Um, so I sat down and played around with that. Oh, my God. As I said, did it in book pages, but what I wanted to do, the whole thing in book pages, but every pocket and all the rest was done from a different book so that I got different fonts, different types. I love different types of books as well that give me tables and um, like this one is a Pittman shorthand. This is from an old um, joinery one, as you can see. So it's all on how to do woodwork from, I don't know, the 40s. Everything was done with different. So when you open it up, I've got four little envelopes in there, all done from a different book. My bits that I've popped on there as well, bits is not the right word, but that's the word we'll go with, are all from other books as well. When I originally did this one, as I said, I was playing with this one and the book that I used was a bit too white. So I just used my inks. So I used antique linen, etc., and inked over it and then decided that I don't want that bit done because I want to actually adhere it, the whole plan for this one. So this is the size that I've done for this book. So this will be adhered onto that. And it really doesn't make any more bulk and I'm wrapped with them so the size that this one is well the size that my little journal 
will be. My pages are four inches by about five and three quarter inches. So it is just a little journal. I like little ones, excuse me, I like little ones that I can hold in my hands, like so. So I think I might occasionally work on a five by seven, but I haven't done anything over that. So this little guy, Finish size is round about a bit over three and a quarter inches by, <coughs> oh, excuse me, a bit over five inches, not quite five and a quarter. And it was literally just working out where to do it in the page. With this one, I didn't have, as I said, I started with normal, um, normal book paper that I had sitting there that was just, it was a novel. So, it wasn't large enough to give me this full size. So I had to cut two sheets and join them. This was literally my play around one and I've joined them and then I didn't like the little white bit in there even though I'd inked over it. So I popped some washi tape in there as well. What I've since found, because I loved it so much, I thought, yep, we'll do the video on this. Um, what I've since found was a map book, Big Atlas. Atlas, that's the word I want. Big Atlas. In the back of Atlases, because I didn't necessarily want maps because it wasn't a travel piece. In the back of Atlases are all your bits and pieces for where everything is. But they make a wonderful, wonderful, just journaled piece of book page. So that's what I've grabbed for now. And if I fold this on this line, which matches on this side. So I'm just going to fold it straight down on that line. Like so. Give that a good crease. And then I can cut it to size. So just with my trimmer. I'm going to cut off. This top section, which is the white. Make sure that that's straight on my fold because my fold's not wonderfully straight. So we'll now make a new straight for it. So I have my writing way at the top. And I'll just trim off a little bit at the bottom. This one's got the W on it. And we'll just make a size. So I'm going to go to the start of C for Canada because that's normally my measurements. Right. Sorry. Those to the side. And there it is. But again, for me, they're too light. Might suit you fine. That's fine. Everybody is different. I always work, and again, if you've been following me for a while, I always work with these sorts of colours. You can have colours whatever you want. But for me to change this up, I started with my Distress Oxide in the Antique Linen. And, and I wanted it slightly motley. So I've just given it a very light finish, just a mottled finish when you're starting with them. Start off your page and work your way across. That way you get less just circle blobs. All right, so I just wanted that mottled finished, finished, finish. Wipe that up. Brush corduroy. Um, I know I used oxide in the first one and ink in this one. For when I'm doing things like this, it makes no difference which ones you're using. So this will just give it that further darkening, grungy. I like the grungy, well-worn, very, you know, handled well, pre-loved and all the rest. So that just tones it down a bit further. And then I tend to finish with walnut stain. And I'll do my edges like we tend to do. But just that just gives those a bit, a bit of a darker hue, and then I'll get my ink pad. I don't want too much more on there, and I'll just 
see how now I'm not doing my circles? I'm just literally going over. And I might go darker in spots, go into an area. And I think it should get well worn up there. So that what I end up with is this mottled look. And every time you do it, it's going to come out differently. Okay? So that's what it was. That's what it is now. Now, I can coffee dye these. I've got lots and lots of coffee dyed papers and pages and all the rest. But sometimes I want this look. Now, hang on a moment. I'll just pull out. My coffee dyed papers are sitting directly above me. So these are coffee dyed scraps. See how it's still slightly different? I get this very mottled look. I can go over my inks on my coffee dyed papers as well. But sometimes for me, it's just as easy to pull them out, my inks, because my inks sit above me all the time. They are the colours that I use all the time, as you should know by now. <laughs> um, and so they just sit above my desk. Now, you can take this a step further. With this one, you'll also do the inside ones as well. I've got one finished here that we'll swap over so that you're not having to wait for me to do the lot. What I also think looks great on this is a little bit of stamping. So this is just my backgrounds one. I've got a little stamp like this, which gives splatters and coffee rings and all the rest. There's lots of different ones out there. This one is a Kaiser Craft one. Don't know the number. Don't know what it's called. Um, sorry, all I remember is that it was Kaiser Craft. So with this sort of thing, let's say we want that, we want that. We better give it a coffee ring as well. So with just a little pad and I'm going to go my archival link, but I'm going to go tree branch because it's a lighter brown. So it will show, but not take away from it. I just want a piece of scrap under there. So let's just grab grab a piece of scrap. This is a piece of scrap. Right. So that when I do it, see how it's just there? So let's say that's that one. You can do as many or as little as you like. I love, I know Tim Holtz has a set of these as well. Um, Darkroom Door has a set. Probably most stamp companies have these sorts of sets. So, you know, you've got your splashes. You've got your coffee rings. If you want coffee ring in there as well. Um, or you've got just this little marking. You know... Stamp them off the page as well. A lot of this will be covered, but you're getting to see what I mean. You can stamp them off the page. You can stamp them on the page. You can stamp them anywhere you like. And it just gives... Now look at the difference between what we started with and what we've got now. With very little difference. Very little difference. With very... <laughs> with very little... Um, See, I've lost it now. Completely lost it. No, it's gone. Gone, gone. Don't get old. I'm telling you. <laughs> Very little effort. There you go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> right. Collect yourself, Kylie. Let's go back to it. Right. These sorts of things you can also, if you don't have the stamp sets, look at what you've got around you. All right, this is the base of my glue stick. So let's just ink that up and make a coffee ring. Okay, so just look at what else you have around you, just for those little bits that give highlights to your pages, to your ephemera, to all sorts of bits and pieces. Have a look at what you've got. So in saying that, Ta-da! Magic of TV. Here's one, so you can see. 
because I'm going to stick this into the page. So here it is finished and the inside is finished as well. So that's from that. Okay, and it just makes all the difference. A lot of this you won't see, but you'll see little glimpses of them. And for me, that's what makes the difference. And that's why I love stamping so much. Right, so here's our base now, all done. I'll stop waffling. <laughs> and what we're going to do is make our little envelopes. Now, our little envelopes, so easy. For me, I used tag dies. So I'm going to move these over because I want to actually put my big shot. I'll clean all my stamps later. Well, I'll wipe them over. I don't clean them, clean them. So for me, all right, big shot. I'm hoping you can see that. Yep, beautiful. And I'll work sideways. Again, I've got two, I've got more than two sets of tag dies, but I have two that I use permanently and I've just put them in these little containers to keep them all together this one which I've just done up now is an Australian company Ugh. uniquely creative um tags tops and tails die UCD 1935 it's one of my favorites you'll see me using it all the time Mainly because it gives me my layered dies, that's fine, but I like the shape on the top, okay? I have the the Tim Holtz one here as well, the framelits, 658784, which gives lots and lots, and it gives these lovely big ones as well. But I like the shape of these. Now, you can cut your own tags. Don't feel you have to use dies. For this one, I'm going to use these dies because I really enjoy them. Okay, so I want two sizes. So one I've already cut out. No, I haven't. <laughs> All right, I want, I want, I want, I want. Yes, I want a page out of all my bits and bobs here. All right. So this is just a, well, I think it's a kid's one that I picked up at an antique shop and half of it was missing and it's all fallen apart. So I don't mind actually cutting into it. I'm just going to cut these bits off. One, so then I, I know I've got them and I put them in a separate little container and I use them for stamping. And two, so that it will fit my big shot okay so I want the writing when you're doing this for me oh, hang on. All right so if you see this I have a thing with my words <laughs> sorry I like my words going the right way so see how my words are all going the right way to get this and I cut and oh, here we go all right so if I just cut this tag out Okay, so you'd put your tag on, cut it out. When you fold this, your words are going the wrong way. And for me, that's an issue. It doesn't have to be an issue for anyone else. That's just my little thing. So when you go to cut your tag out, and I'm putting it that way so that this is on the back, and I... Don't get that spot where there's no writing. Put your tag upside down. Make sense? Because then when it comes out, and I'm just going to stick that there so it's slightly straight, so that when it comes out and you fold it, your tag will allow the writing up the right way. Up the right way. You know what I mean. All right, so I'm just going to... Stick that there. It's just a little bit of washi tape to hold it down. All right, we'll run that through. Because they're really thin um, book papers, you only need to run them through the once. 
Actually, I'll get my muscles again today because I'll keep moving it over. All right. So what I've got now is that. So if I sit that to where I want my, my top flap to go, fold this one, I'll move that so that, fold this one so that, see where my fold is? I like them to go just below the fold. If I put that just below the fold, give that a crease so that when I've folded this now, <laughs> it's crooked, but my words are running up the right way. Okay. This little bit will be stuck down. I'll put a little, find my pencil, find my mid spot, which is about there. So if I'm going off my grid, that bit's my mid spot. I can then punch my little thumb hole in that. And what I've then got is this. So I want two of those for this side of my little book. So I've got a darker one. Now I'd like a lighter one. So if I go into all my bits and bobs and I'm looking for a lighter one here, that's lighter, isn't it? Yes. Right. So we'll do that again making sure that this is up the right way. If I go down there and pop him through. I'm going to need to cut off a little bit of that again, aren't I? All right. And I have lots of different... That'll fit. That'll fit. Pop you in here. That one in there. Just roll it through the once. If you're working with thicker cardstock, you may need to roll them all through two times, just forward, back, etc. But for the most part, with book pages, you will only need that one. All right. Set that there. Once again, now I want to go off the original one so that they both end up the same. So what I tend to do, sit them on my grid, once again, line them up, sit them on my grid, so that my top piece is here. Sit that on the grid, sit that on there. And I've got that fold just above this line. Straighten it up, and my fold is just above that line. You could measure it and all the rest, but, you know, half the time, life's too short. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just, once again, going to fold that bit up there so that it's just below there. Try and make it straight. and find my center point. Once again, I always use my grid just here. Make my thumb hole. And once again, I've got another little envelope. Now they're my large envelopes. Now I'll just show you, and I know everybody gets sick to death of seeing um, inking, but just show you how it then starts to show all this. And so you can see, because they're not um, just plain paper, you lose a lot of your, your folds and where things finish if you haven't inked them. So now you can see exactly where it is, which is why I ink. Again, it's personal choice, and I want that bit so that I can see in there. And I don't need, of course, that one, because that'll be like so. Okay, so when we glue these ones together, you'll just follow, there's my 
fold line and I'll go from my top straight down fold him back up give it a push if I can find my cloth which then just sops up any glue that's come out as well so you can see it there all right there's our first one exactly the same with our second one and this is a really thin paper so i just need to watch and not go like a bullet a gate when i'm actually inking around this one i do want to go in there so that that shows and I want to go in that side so just crease it back the other way run it down a little bit like so and it just allows all that to then shine through so you can see how thin this paper is right and down there like so didn't do in that one. I'll stick this one down and then we'll do our small ones because I want to show you something else with our small ones. So I'll glue that down so I know that they're all done because it doesn't take long to put together once they're all done. Straight down. Straight down. Finding that. All right, so I've got two of those. They will go here and here. So I want a light colored one again. This is just me for down here and then a darker one for up here. So lighter one and let's have a look at what I've got in lighter ones that will work won't it yep that'll work right set that aside set that aside and I want my smaller die so this time I want this one Again, it's going to need to go underneath. But with this die, here's one I cut earlier so I can show you, right? So it's that die. So it's in there like so. If I fold this die the way it is at the moment, like so, like so, it's cute, but it's a little bit too small. Okay, so it'll get, you've got one up here, one down there. I'd like them a little bit longer. That's easy. To do them a little bit longer, now this one needs to go down here. To do them a little bit longer, I'm going to stop my die machine here and then I can just cut the rest of down there. Doesn't make sense? I'll show you what I mean. Now, I'll just... Cut that straight up there. It should give me space. And that one. All right, we'll put this die machine back over. Oh. Right. So again, my die is going on back to front. Normally you'd go that way. We're gonna go this way. Okay. So that if I've got this at the top of my wording, this will still be at the back. Right. And I'm going to just stick that one down to make sure it's nice and straight. If I can find my... Right. Now, top plate. Move this out a little bit. Slide my top plate in so that my top plate will finish... Round about there. 
Okay, so here's my die down here. My top plate's finishing here. It doesn't hurt your dies, it's fine. What will then happen when I run it through, doesn't matter whether I run it through once or twice or whatever else, when I run it through, move that, set that down, what will have happened is that it's only cut to where my top plate was. Now you can do that with a big shot, with a cuddle bug, with whatever brand of die cutting machine you've got. They all have that sandwich. Makes no difference which machine it is. So that what happens now, because it's only cut to where that top plate put the pressure on your die. Yes, my die's a little bit bent, but once I start running that through to cut normal tags, it'll just go the other way. So that's fine. Sit you over there. Now, just a cutting mat and a ruler. And I'll just follow that line down. So I've just set my ruler on the cut line up here, straight down. Do the same over here. And now I've got a tag of any length I like. Okay, so I've already got one to save time. So I've got two. So I've got my light colored, light colored one, my dark colored one, different fonts. So I am um, governed by the size of this one. So I'll take that off where it finishes because this was from a smaller notebook, notebook, novel. You know what I mean? So I'll fold this one down. What side do I like better? This side, I think. Ah, do you know what I've done? There you go. Done it round the wrong way. And it's so easy to do. So let's grab another one of those. That's from this book. Um, Tom Brown's School Days, which was all falling apart and all the rest. Anyway, so we'll just tear another page out of that one and we'll very quickly recut that. Ah, ah, ah. Awesome, Kylie. All right, very quickly. What did I do with the die? Small die, wasn't it? And I need to go that way. Stick that down. I'll go that way. So that my top plate finishes about there and I'll run that through. Hang on a moment. You've seen what I'm doing now, so I'll just, I'll run it through. There you go. So my, here's one I prepared earlier to make this quicker. Didn't actually work, did it? That's what I want. Recut back down here. Right. I think my blade needs sharp, needs a new blade because this is old paper again and it likes to get caught if I'm not watching it. Right. Um, paper has like slubs in it. So we'll cut that off there. Yep, definitely need a new blade in my knife. Right, so as we were, <laughs> this will be our governing one because it's smaller. That will be my top. And I want, want it about that long? Let's have a look in my book. My book was, let's say about five inches, so two and a half. It's going to be around about there. That's the space I've got to play with. That works a treat, doesn't it? it sits in there even, even, even. So if I stick that down there, and then what I can do, if 
fold that back like that and then trim that off across there it's beside me it's beside me right trimming that off over there That's it. That's there. So that's now our governing size for this one. Which is on the end of that writing. Not quite there. All right. Uh, so I need my front fold first, my top fold first. Sit you there. Sit you on that one. I'm hoping you're all still in shot. Making sure it's straight. Making sure it's straight and we've gone just below that line. Fold it over, Kylie. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. Having a good day today. I think it might be coffee time. That's better. Maybe it'd be easier if I measured. Where's the fun in that? All right. And then back up. To that one just below there all right and now the big test will they fit in the book so i've got light dark light dark yes they do beautiful i need my little put that one away i need my little thumb hole in there See, now this one I always measure because I can never get my eye correct on these ones. So I may not measure anything else, but I always measure these. Right. And I'm just using a one and a quarter inch circle. Um, you can use any size you like, or you can just leave them flat. Or, or you could again sit your die on there and get that curve going in there if you want to be fussed with all of that. So you're going to go that way. I really like my ink on, and I don't mind about that. Um, I'm going to leave that because I like that, that rough, worn look. Got that bit, got that bit. So, goes in there and tuck that over so that you get that section in there as well. And then this one, you don't need the back, don't need the back. That side. And the inside of that one, like so. Right, they can now be adhered down. I don't need that one anymore. Left the glue undone, so let's see if we'll actually get any glue out of it. Yep, here we go. That one's going to ooze everywhere. All right, up, cloth, give him a good push. And let's face it, we all get so much book paper because this, this craft just, <laughs> I think that's why I love it so much because I love books, I love the feel, 
and the texture of book paper because there's so many different styles and types and fonts and all the rest. But we do end up with a rather large stash. So if we can use our book paper in lots more ways, then it's got to be a good thing, surely. Right, that one and that one. Now, what I also like to do is, so the bits that I've used is this page. I used this page. I used, what was the other one? The, no, that's just Tom Brown again. So, I, oh, here we go. I used this one. And the other one was but that one and that one, Tom Brown, that one, that one, and that one. So they were my four, okay? What I want to do in them is cut my little hole reinforces. All of these tag brands, here we go, have little hole reinforcers as well. So this one, which is why I tend to put them in these little pockets to keep them all together. That's the little die for the tags, for the dies that go with this. So, you know, I have a, a little jar of them done up where I've just cut them out of old manila envelopes. But for this, I want to use the book paper as well. But I want the separate one. So these are my two big ones. Same, same hole reinforcer because it's from the same company. So I want one in this colour and one in this one, which is this one and this one. So if I just sit them together, I should be able to cut them both at the same time. And I'll just run that through my machine. And my top one, make my sandwich. I'll run that through. And I'll run it forward and back. Yep, that's cut both of those at the same time. Now it's just a matter of getting them apart. Okay, so I've got two different coloured hole reinforcers. And I'll do those before I get too confused. What I want to do with those, move that one to the side and that one to the side. Big one and big one. That one was that, so I'm going to put that on the other one. If that makes sense. You'll know what I mean. Once again, just a little bit on the edges, just to highlight it so that it doesn't fade in. And... I want my tweezers for this. I like my tweezers because they will hang on to it for me. So when I'm doing something fiddly like this, I can just, it'll just hang on to them. And that one's then going to go on there like that. Open that out. Push that down. All right. So now we've got this. So if you cut your tags, you can put holes in them or you can leave them without holes. That's fine. And this one, of course, is going to have this one. Not the right way again. Push. Oh, didn't. So imagine, oh no, hang on, hang on, if I'm quick enough, look at that. <laughs> oh, right, just, I want it to stand out. And as I said before, that's fully personal 
choice. All right, that's a little bit better. And again, a little bit more because it's now all over my finger. Right. Now it will stand out. And you can see, because it's a different font as well, gives you something a little bit extra. So, same thing for these ones. And we've used this page. And we've used this page. And it should fit down there like so. Yes, it does. Beautiful. And I reckon that'll fit down there like so. Might not. I had another little piece of that one, didn't I? There we go. All right. Just going to stick that on that one because it's nearly coming off that. And I know that if I'm not watching myself, it will disappear. Just trim that off. Trim that off. Set that on. Run it through, need my top plate. All right. That must scrap spin. That one is going. All right, so there they are. And before I forget, because they are so tiny, I will put it back in its little container. Don't need that one anymore. And I don't need that one anymore. So they can all just go back in that. All right, should have two in here. There we go. A little bit of ink on them again. Uh, oops, I'll ink both of them at the same time this time. What do you reckon? <laughs> Doing well. Doing well. Right. And hence why my hands always look so yucky. Right. Move that out of the way back onto the book pages. That's this one and this one. I've got a light one and I've got a dark one. Hang on to that. A few little drops. Push with the cloth. Move that over a little bit. Too late now. All right, that one's down there. And then we've got this one, and then we'll stick them on. Ah, oh, look, I do this every time and I say, get myself organised, we'll do a short one. I reckon I can do a 20 minute video. And I've just looked at the time and realised I've already been 50 minutes. Sorry. That's all I can say. Sorry. All right. So now we'll just adhere these ones on. I've got all those there and I just use that's right I use that as my glue thing and I just use my glue stick making sure I go right to the corners and up the right way I'm just going to sit that vaguely in place so that I can see a placing for that one And at least if I'm using book paper, I should be straight because um, I've got a an actual line to follow, surely. All right, that one. Now, this is that very fine paper or old paper, so I've got to be careful when I'm gluing it. Follow the same line down there, top and bottom, and onto that one. Oh, 
Right, these ones find a non gluey spot. Okay. Sit that one in there like that. So once again, I can work out my placing because these ones are a little bit longer. They're shorter that way, but a little bit longer. So I can see some glue sticking out there. Last one. It's again an old, old one, so I've just got to be careful with where it goes. All right. There to there, showing some of that going straight, <laughs> going straight, Kylie. Don't know if you got all of my head in that one. I'll move that to the side, right? So there's our inside, and look, there's hardly any bulk to that. So a front cover, nice and easy. So all we're going to do for our front cover, and I just want to show you a different thing with that. I'll go over that Pittman's book again. Um, and I had a piece sitting out because I really like the shorthand book. It's, um, oh, well, there's a nice table, actually. I love, I love, love, love tables. It might not be tall enough, but I can use it for other things. That's fine. Rifle back through all these books. Oh, I've got books everywhere. See, these ones are coffee dyed. But I still don't get that same look, which is why I want... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. What have I got on that? I prefer to have a full one. So a full exercise sheet. I've got one here somewhere. Ah, look. Something like that. Right. So... I'm going to go something like that. We're going to chop off that. I'll go straight down the bottom so that I'm right on the edge of all that wording. And if I go a little bit up the side, I can always chop more off, but I can't put it back on. So... Don't want to go too small. And but we will try and keep it straight. Oh, that looks nice. Right. So I want a section here, so if I could take it from there to about down there. And I can just sit that in my trimmer, line up my marks. I can find the marks and cut down so that what I've got is that. Okay. Now, what I want to do is a border going across here. So, once again, with a border punch, and I'm going to find some wording again, and it can just be anything. Just a book that I haven't that I haven't used yet, but I will need a full page to get my yeah. Yeah. just a normal novel. You're very uh, light. I've got a Jane Eyre one here. Yep. All right, Jane Eyre. Um, but it's a beautiful colour. Love the colour.
All right, add that to the pile over there. What I want on this one is this border punch, okay? So if I just punch across and layer it down, it's going to have the wording going whooped. So what I want to do is similar to this one. Make sense? Whoops. Pull that out. Because that's where I did this one yesterday. And I want to run this down that way. So that it's actually coming down. So if I sit this in here, this is my, this is the line that I want to go down. So I need it up here and I will just then punch down. Does that make sense? All right. Just to make sure I get it on. All right. So if I cut on that line, I'm just going to sit it on that line or close to that line. I can because I've only done a part line. Right. That's on the same angle as that. What I'm going to do now is sit this in and punch this out. Unfortunately, this punch is getting a little bit old, so I may have to do some tidying up with it but just a straight border punch making sure this edge is to the top and then I've only got the shiny silver bits lined up with that okay now I've got that so my writing is running along the same line just need to double check that I've cut all these. So as you can see, this punch is getting a little bit old and it doesn't punch that little one anymore. I've had it for, oh, lot of years, but I love it. So I can put up with having to do this when I use it. The rest are all done. Beautiful that in. What I want to do is that. Just give that a little bit of oomph. That's going to sit in there like that. So once again, I'll just give that some oomph. There, so I'm just going to trim this across there. Don't need all of that. That's the line I'm on. Don't know if you can see that. Yep, that's the line I'm on. So I'm just going to take it out a little bit further. So that what I've ended up with is that. Then I'm going to run, excuse me, just some double-sided tape, very thin double-sided tape across this one. Try and do it straight. Cut that one. Sit that over there. Peel that. Sitting that one on the line of there so that it's, what I actually want to do is um, if I put that there, it's going to finish on a part one again. So I'm going to go half and half, I'm thinking. 
that might be better. So that I've lined it up underneath the holes for the punch. Whoops, I'll bring that up. So I've lined it up underneath the holes of the punch. Otherwise, and again, it's just a me thing. I'd end up with a full and then only a little bit one. So now I can just trim this up. Take it from that side. And what I've now got is a border as well that's going to go on there. Okay. We'll glue this one down. So this one is a full pocket on the front. I didn't do that up again. Up into those ones just to hold them in place a little bit better so that they don't get too ripped with pulling things in and out. Put the lid on that this time. This one can be adhered down. Cloth. Because I've got a bit of glue coming out this time, I can see it everywhere. All right. So there's my little pocket at the front, which just goes straight down there. So all I've done is I've then cut another one out of the Tim Holtz dies. We'll rush this through so that this goes in like so. So it doesn't matter what size you've done. I've then gone back through all my little bits that I had floating around. And I love chapters in books. Um, I quite often, when I'm going through, take those out anyway, because I think they work a treat. So I've used the Jane Eyre book again. And then just found highlighted bits in those pages and adhered them on. And that is all you need to do to embellish it, if you want. So something like this. We'll do this one. Now you can cut, you can tear. It's up to you. I like the torn look. But, you know, you might want a straight look. And that's fine. So straight away like that. Down little bit of glue um, and this one is a light colored one so we might put in a longer one so we might put it on that one so once again ugh, I'll um, change the colors over and all the rest as I go so that they stand out like that how hard is that go back through your book pages go back and look at everything get them all done and dusted, embellish it, try and do it with just book pages. It was such a fun thing to do when I was playing around with this that, yeah, and I went, oh, I'm going to have to do that as the video because, oh, glue, sorry. <laughs> See, I just took that bit out and that one I actually cut. So there it is up there. Any of these little bits and bobs... You know, unit two. Awesome. And that's why I like, there's a little unit one up there, maps. That's why I like different types of books. I have practical bookkeeping and electrical circuits and all of those sorts of things for just that sort of thing. Have a look at your books. You can pick those sorts of books up in op shops, thrift shops, those sorts of things um, fairly cheaply. And they're a great way of giving you all this sort of thing. So I hope you've enjoyed this little one as much as I have. Try and make some. Try and get rid of some of your book paper. Love to see how they come out. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.